So with Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 just around the corner, I thought it was finally time for me to discuss the movie Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, as it's been released subwise for like 9 months, maybe even a year at this point. I think it aired in Japan December 2021 in theaters, and honestly man, I just avoided this movie. I knew Season 2 was coming, I would rather watch it when it would be closer to Season 2, get my s excitement up, and to see what it was all about. So I went into this completely blind, more blind than a lot of anime. Didn't watch a single trailer, didn't even really read the synopsis, I was just... I, I avoided it, and I went into this, no expectations other than probably a really polished Jujutsu Kaisen extra long episode, and man was I surprised. The simplicity, sometimes simplicity can be best, but that story between Yuta and Rika, man, it's so tragic, and honestly, there is a couple of moments throughout this film that absolutely shook me visually. I mean, there's some sound effects of bones popping, there is absolute savage murder and bloodshed. I feel like they went extra extreme with like skin stretching and ripping and it just, it was messed up at times. But the idea of love, the, the most powerful of curses, what love can do to someone. Why is this girl like haunting our boy? Was she special or is he special? And just over the course of the movie, seeing this like little cute promise between kids and then her getting hit by a car and just dying in front of him and them becoming this abomination around him that refuses to let anyone hurt him or even himself when he tries to kill himself, the knife gets twisted. To see by the end and leaving it, it just, it sets up my excitement tenfold for season two because whether or not some of these moments ever get mentioned again doesn't really matter because it reminds you of all the key players we fell in love with with Season 1 while showing one hell of a polished Jujutsu Kaisen arc all at the same time. Now, if you'd like to see my full live reaction to this entire movie, I do have it available on my Patreon if you're interested in seeing that. It's over there. You can start supporting if you so wish, but we will be talking about it here because I have some thoughts. Overall, I leave this incredibly impressed. It's definitely some of the more memorable Jujutsu Kaisen content for me, not because of the extra refined polished animation, but because the story of Yuta really just clicked and worked with me. It almost feels in a way similar to like a superhero story design standpoint, as someone unexpectedly thrown into a situation but not really trying to be a part of it but then learning what it's like to be associated with this new environment. And the idea of someone like Yuta who, tragic life, loved the VA, perfectly casted if you ask me in terms of just almost being a little bit of a scaredy cat but just feeling like such a good nature person who has dealt such shitty hands in life. The idea that you have this very tragic love story, this little cute dynamic between two young people who then get it ripped away like, I mean, if that doesn't scar you from marriage, I mean, goddamn is your mentality strong be like, hey, we should get married and be promised together forever and then cut to the next scene of her dying on the road and I'm like, Jujutsu Kaisen, you sick mother, that is twisted. But what works about the simplicity of this story, and I'm not saying simplicity equals bad, I'm saying they made a very easy to digest kind of romance, tragic romance story of two kids saying and just clearly having a great connection together, saying we're going to marry each other, and then she dies. And then we see the abomination type spirit that is haunting him and how tragic his life is to the point that he wanted to end his own life, the bullying and everything, and just... If you try to hurt him, you get stuffed into a locker and the blood seeps to underneath your sneakers. It's just, you could tell that this is tragic. Imagine having such a connection to someone and not knowing why they became that monster that's now haunting you and seemingly protecting you. And by the end of the film, when you see the punchline of, of course one of them had to be special, right? There's no way that just the power of love was enough to do this. Turns out our boy was indeed special. He comes from a pretty powerful line, all things considered. And the fact that love, the most powerful curse, seeing someone like that die before you, of course that would activate something and keep her there. And I thought it was brilliant how they handled the departure scene because the agreement that he ultimately made was that he would give his life if she would completely unleash and protect and stop someone like Ghetto, right? And ultimately, why did he get to live? Well, because he's the one who set the curse and he pretty much put the power in her hands, seeing her in that way, of course she's not going to blame him. In fact, she's gonna say, live out your life and don't meet me until you've had a full fulfilling life. And it's a very beautiful way to tie together such a tragic story as then you see him go off and train as if you watch after the credits in the movie, there's like a, a minute and a half, give or take, which shows that he's been training elsewhere and 
doing his own things for a long period of time, which which explains season one and the absence of him there. But either way, it really was a compelling story. It's simple on paper, but that simplicity of such a tragic character, while having all the other characters we're familiar with because of season one, it keeps it there so you don't have to have constant info dumps of who this character is or what their abilities are. We, we're associated with season one, so in doing so, we're just thrown back into a world we're immediately familiar with, but get to just focus on this story between these two tragic characters, and honestly, it had a much happier ending than I was initially expecting. Still tragic, but I thought he was for sure sacrificing himself fully there. And the action was incredible. Now, movies and anime movies, they're usually an, uh, just a more refined anime episode. And if you look at the pacing of this, every 24 minutes, give or take, it felt like we could have been watching this on TV in terms of structure. Not visually, but structure. It felt like that's where the credits would start playing. And honestly, it just felt like watching a full Jujutsu Kaisen arc in TV form if it was extra refined. But it was really extra refined. Art design didn't didn't dip whatsoever, it was crisp and polished the whole way through, but man, the stretching of skins or just like the final fight when people, the hand-to-hand -hand combat animation. So that fight between our boy Yuta and Ghetto, when the camera work, it just speaks for itself. It's at a far enough distance from these two characters going at it completely unfiltered but it's close enough to catch every detail. It just was so smooth. You felt like that GoPro, but with that 4K resolution catching every single punch. And honestly, yeah, this was insane action-wise. We got all the fights I wanted to see. We got to see Gojo complete. Like, there's a moment. It's like 40 minutes before the ending or so when he's like on the rooftop and like there's this like big titan-like monster around the corner. He just raises his hand and obliterates that fool being like, I don't have time for you right now. And I'm like, my boy. We knew you were the biggest badass in this show, but the goddamn, that's insane. And honestly, I really liked what they did with Gojo and Ghetto in this movie because seriously, like he he says it best near the end being like, you know, that was my best friend, the, the person I could trust the most in the world. And obviously we know there's still so much left story there to explore. But I like the fact that it's a very interesting complex dilemma because the idea of like just seeing those simple flashback moments how much they're smiling feeling like they're completely on the same same wavelength and then we go to seeing him pretty much saying the monkeys of the world i want to slaughter them all i want to craft the world where only the strong like me are around and then he'll have moments being like i swear i'm a good guy and i'm like bro you can't talk about slaughtering the world and then say you're a good guy in the same sentence like it just doesn't go hand in hand but it's an interesting and complex relationship for sure, and man, just the VAs, they went absolutely above and beyond. Rika's VA completely nailed it. I love the idea of having this like very soft-spoken, cute, adorable voice in this monstrous form, which is already like one of the more interesting designs that Jujutsu Kaisen has seen. Very cool, and honestly went as crazy as I thought they would with almost like a crazy love story. There's a moment where, after saving the three, because they just got absolutely obliterated, she ends up grabbing Maki and just, like, is, like, almost ready to kill her because she's like, why is it always you? Like, why are you getting dotted all over? And he has to, like, scold her, being like, don't you dare, she's the entire reason I'm here, and then she starts apologizing. It's really interesting how they went about. It wasn't overly complex in the way and it wasn't constantly there. But you had the assumption probably the entire movie that given the fact that no one can hurt him, he can't even hurt himself. If he fell in love with anyone else, you would just assume that this crazy childhood crush would probably attack anyone if romance was in the air. And you get a very brief moment near the end of the movie, which shows that, yeah, absolutely, if this would have been left completely unfiltered, unhinged, bad things could definitely happen. But I like the fact that it did end on a bittersweet moment rather than a completely tragic moment, all things considered. Either way, like the story beats, they're simplistic, but they work that simplicity to its full potential remind us why certain abilities are arguably the coolest in the show when you can just simply speak a word and completely crush. There's a moment with the speak where Ghetto gets his head like compressed and he somehow walks that shit off and that flexes how much of a badass he can be. It just felt like an extra refined Jujutsu Kaisen arc and it has me hyped for more. I thought this would be good but I didn't think I'd come out saying it was one of the most memorable Jujutsu Kaisen moments for me but I honestly felt that way. I really, really enjoyed it, and I'm even more pumped for season two now, but let me know if you got any feelings, whether what you're excited to see maybe in season two, as long as you're not posting spoilers, of course, or what you thought of this movie, because this was incredible, if you ask me. 
Let me know down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more Jujutsu Kaisen on the channel in the very near future. And hey, I do have a Patreon where I have a full live reaction to this entire movie. I'll have full live reaction to all of season two. I give early access to videos just like these as well. So consider supporting if you so wish. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.